And I see her sit down at this big table of people, and I'm with my group of people. Anyway, I walked over to her, and I said, hey, excuse me, my name's Grant Show. Um, we never met, but we went to school together. I think we um, know a few of the same people. And she looked at me like this. She went, no. <laughs> I don't remember, I swear to God. <laughs> Please welcome the Marvel's Place panel, Grant Show, Daphne Zuniga, and Josie Bazette. Give it up. There you go. Hi, Hi there. Oh. Hi, everybody. Hey, guys. Thank there you, you go. Welcome aboard. Yes. So good to have you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. First, first time in Pittsburgh? Yep. First time for me and first Comic-Con. First Comic-Con. So what's your take on this so far? I am loving it. I'm loving the people are so nice. And it's uh, very entertaining for me, too, standing behind that booth looking at everybody and super happy to get to see these guys as well. I agree. Yeah, it's been really a pleasure talking with people. Your first Comic-Con as well? Yep. Wow. Oh, I'm an, uh, an old pro. <laughs> <laughs> she drug us here. I was here. here <laughs> I dragged him into this thing. No, um, I was here about four years ago, I think. That's right. Yeah, I think so. I interviewed you then, that's right. So we're gonna kind of keep things general. Obviously, we can't really mention certain things because of the strike, but just a general question of how you all got into acting. Hmm. Very general, nice question. Nice question. Um, I've loved it ever since I was a little girl and doing skits, you know, hijacking my parents' dinner parties and making them all go in the living room and then rearranging the furniture and doing skits to when I was uh, in my first play when I was about 13 or 14 to um, college where I went to UCLA to do plays and theater where apparently this guy went as well. We were there the same year only didn't know each other. Uh, until we worked. But we did run into each other years later, not too many years later. Yeah. And we do have a story that we have. Well, you have a story. He loves the story. <laughs> Apparently, I was a B I T C H to him. I never, I never said that. I never said that. <laughs> no, so here, okay, here's the yeah. story. We'll get, back, we'll get back to you how you yeah, got into yeah, acting. That's it, that's it. So we, we did go to UCLA together at the same time, but we didn't know each other. We, I was in New York. I was doing Ryan's Hope, and she was there. I don't know what she was doing there, but I was in a restaurant, this little Mexican restaurant. Um, I think it was called uh, La, 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 I can't remember. Caramba? I Caramba, La Caramba, something like that. <laughs> and I see her sit down at this big table of people, and I'm with my group of people. Anyway, I walked over to her, and I said, hey, excuse me, my name's Grant Show. Um, we never met, but we went to school together. I think we um, know a few of the same people. And she looked at me like this. She went... No. <laughs> I don't remember, I swear to God. And if he came up to you, would you turn to him and go, no? So I'm sure it was somebody else. Maybe I Gina Gershon. I made the whole thing up. Uh, anyway, well, we made it for it later, for years. Yeah, absolutely. Getting to know each other on the show. Um, for me, I started out modeling when I was started when I was 12, and then modeled up until I was 16. And I got this opportunity to go to Japan. Um, I went to Japan, and then my roommate in Japan was with LA Models and lived in Santa Monica. She's like, "Well, after this, you should come, like, stay with me, maybe get into modeling there." So I did that. Finished high school, did that, and then in natu it's kind of natural to do commercials too when you're in LA mm -hmm. and you're a model. So then I started getting commercials and then a lot of people were like reading scripts at the commercials and I was like, oh, well, what are they doing? They're acting. And I had met this guy and he's like, well, I'll introduce you to my agent. So then I got an agent and then I went on stuff and I just started working as an actor, but I didn't set out to be that. Um, and that's sort of what started my career. And then of course we got super lucky with um, a great hit show like Melrose Place. And yeah, so I was 21 when that started. In my whole twenties, yeah, yeah. I totally remember this. You were twenty-one when we started that I show. I was twenty-one, and I got married when I was twenty-one wow. too. I know. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I did not want to be an actor. I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> Seriously. It's so cute. Um, but in the seventies, there was really no space program anymore. I mean, it was there, but it wasn't really. Do they weren't doing anything. So I, I thought I would um, go into the Air Force and fly jets. Um, 
I always reach for very achievable goals. <laughs> <laughs> but to get into the Air Force, you have to do a whole lot of stuff. Like you have to become a, an Eagle Scout. You need a senator's letter of recommendation. The, the school I was going to wasn't good enough, so I had to go. I went to a parochial school to get a better, um, well, not necessarily education, but to look better on my transcripts. And in doing all that, I realized I did not want to be in the military. Um, and then I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I went back to my regular public school. Some one of the kids in my class talked me into going out for a play. I did some plays in high school. Didn't really think anything of it that other than it was just fun. And then after high school, kind of jagged off, not knowing what to do. And someone a couple years later said, you know, you were doing plays in high school. They're looking for people to do a play here at this community theater. So I did. I went out and did it. And that's when I was like, you know what? This is really fun. If I can get them to pay me money to do this. This I could do for the rest of my life. And I have to say, it has been quite a ride. I've loved my career. I've just had a great, 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 great time. I'm, yeah. I'm super grateful. Aww, great. It's fun to learn about things I didn't know about either I one know, of you. I didn't know <laughs> either. Thanks for cool. asking. Yeah, totally. So just a quick question. The show was like uh, part of a second franchise. Uh, was that a help or a hindrance following a show? Like you're the second installment. Well, Grant was on it. Didn't you do? Right. Oh. But it was, that was intended. Like they yeah. knew they were going to, they knew they were going to use spin-off. the character of Jake yeah. mm-hmm. to spin off on the new show of Melrose Place. Mm-hmm. Um, so they just put me on 902 and 0 to, to do yeah. the springboard. It's mm-hmm. in that, yeah. in that sense. Yeah, it was helpful. But you know, I think, because it was an Aaron Spelling show, because it was a group of young people that similar to 90210, because of 90210's success, yeah, we were going to get some help from that. But, you know, the first year, we were in the tank. It was, we didn't do very well at all the first year. It wasn't until the yeah. second season when the first year of the show was kind of like 90210. It was sort of message-oriented and kind of sweet. And then in this, towards the end of the first season, the writers... The, they must have just let them t- take the reins off. And they yeah, there was more a, a show I think we did that was, uh, well, Heather came on, right. which was huge. And then it just sort of, we sort of found our niche of being a dramedy. And then that's, yeah, being a little bit more nasty. And yeah, then the a second lot more season, nasty. <laughs> they launched the show and the, the tagline for it was, they moved it to Monday nights and the tagline was, Mondays are a bitch. And that was kind of it. <laughs> it took off. So was it a fast-paced show? I mean, it seemed like there was a lot of episodes. Obviously, was there was it as fast-paced as like maybe doing a daily soap opera or a movie? Or which a movie? I, I've been doing films for about eight years when I went on Melrose Place, and I remember I was in my trailer preparing, getting into <laughs> character, like literally going through old journals, and because there's a lot of drama, there's a lot of emotion. Joe had a lot of you know, emotional stuff going on. So I was like getting into character and the AD comes knocking on my door. He's like, Daphne, we're waiting for you. I'm like, I'm preparing. And I'm like, what? And so that first day I thought I was going to get fired because it it just kept going fast and fast. And I learned TV's different than films. Like, you know, you learn your lines and you better be prepared and whatever emotion you have going, use it. Cause, um, and then I got in the swing of things, but it went really fast like just did, at that time most networks were doing 22 episodes yeah. a season and we were doing 34 so yeah there was times when we would shoot two product two two companies would be shooting at the same time we'd have a, a red team and a blue team mm-hmm. um we did like one set of triples or two sets of triples and three sets of doubles like yeah, it was crazy schedule, but the the good thing about it, we'd get paid obviously per episode. Mm-hmm. So for an actor, that was great. And then also, you know, our storylines had to just fit mostly in one. Well, you had to script. remember where you were, and then you had yeah. to remember what location you're going to that day. <laughs> right. Like you'd start out in the morning yeah. for let's say episode twelve, but we're also shooting thirteen. So then you had to go drive yeah. out to Santa Clarita, and you had to rem- just keep that in mind. Like, right? Yeah, it was bananas. Yeah, I think the great thing, like that I love personally about the show is I feel like with, we had such a large cast and it, it got bigger as time went on. But the beauty of that is like not one person's carrying the responsibility of the show, yeah. success or failure. And so 
I personally love that because I felt like I could have a life for my family and a, but also a professional life. Whereas, I don't know, it's, yeah. it's still to this day the hardest I've, well, the most hours I've ever put in. Oh, really? In yeah. Dynasty, I, I would do maybe a, a 70 hour week, but it wasn't every single week. You know, I'd also get a 20 hour week, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So over the seasons, you had a, quite a few different directors. Was that much of a challenge dealing with a different director? Because it changed a bit. We had multiple, though, that we, right. that we come back yeah. over. Yes, yeah. exactly. So throughout the seven years, you kind of felt like, oh, it's Bob again. Like, you oh, know, okay. you know, so you'd, yeah. yeah. Rotated out. And they also rotated. had their own style. Like, some yeah. you like, okay, this one, we know. he doesn't really care how we play it. Like, he just wants to chat in between yeah. takes. And then there'd be someone else who's, like, trying to really like, get Try it this it. way. And you're like, thanks, Charlie, but I've been doing this for, you know. Like, I don't think they ever even talked to me. I think they told me where to stand, and I just they did talked my to stuff. me. <laughs> They, they knew that I was um, unfixable. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, uh, but it was, it, was, it was interesting. You had to adjust to each director. Like, I, like Victoria, I remember Victoria Hockford, who's big in the DGA now. She, but I remember her. She was very, um, you know, just wanted you to get your, the beats right and the emotion and the characters really. She was really into that, I remember. Yeah, that's true. That, that was nice. And then yeah. I remember some of them were just Brand like, yeah, that's anything. fine. Light this, light that. Move on. Let's go. <laughs> so we'll get to audience questions a little bit. I have a few individual questions. This one's for Grant. What are the pros and cons of working on a soap opera? Gosh. Um, well, the thing I like most about, I think pretty much every all television, even if it's like a serialized show like CSI, there's still week to week, something that's happening. There's still character development that happens. So mm -hmm. I think all television on a level is soap opera. You know, it's just like, what kind of spin are you putting on it? Um, but what I like most about doing television is that the characters develop over a long period of time and it continues to develop. It just keeps going and going and going mm -hmm. and going. And you started out doing like slasher films and comedies. How was that transition into television? It seems to be a pretty strange course. Yeah, I know. I, one thing I learned about just overall in this career is like people say, oh, you start and you think you, you know what kind of career you're going to have. Like you have all these best late plans, right? Like, I'm going to be this kind of actor, this kind of actor. And you realize you go from slasher to comedy <laughs> to soap opera to theater to ensemble to, you know, uh, and it just, that's my experience anyway, that you just kind of, and I love that because I love, I love doing all the different kinds, you mm -hmm. know. Um, when I got to Melrose Place, I loved working every day. That's why I did it. Like, I just loved... You're used. I, like you, love mm -hmm. acting, and you got to do that every single day. I couldn't believe it was my job. And, uh, and I just love the variety of doing the comedy, you know, working with Mel Brooks or Rob Reiner, and then, you know, Melrose Place. It's all very serious. Well, you worked with Lucille Ball on The yeah. Stone Pillow. What was she like to work with? I mean, that was a serious role for her. It was a series. It was her last role, right. and um, I was terrified. Uh, when I was a little girl, I used to write fan letters to Lucille Ball, <laughs> and uh, so when I got to work with her, I was just, you know, uh, nervous. <laughs> um, and she was a perfectionist, and, you know, I don't know if you, how many know this, but not only was she a consummate comedian, she was also a producer. And so when we were shooting Stone Pillow in New York City, it was very hot. And she, this is just an example of what a pro she is, she fainted. We were shooting in Port Authority, and she fainted. Uh, she played a, a bag lady, a uh, homeless woman, and uh, had layers and layers on her. So when she fainted, the cameras were rolling, and I'm thinking, oh, she's improvising. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to show her what a pro I am. So I'm going... <laughs> And she didn't answer as I talked to her. And then I like, uh, I think she's fainted, guys. And they're like, what? Cut, 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 what? And she came to, the ambulance were called. Um, and she came to, and they put her on a, a, a seat. And then, and they start, and, and our director said, that's it. We're good for the day. We'll just, you know, we don't need any more, even though we did need more. And she comes to you and she's like, Charlie, what are you doing? 
we got to keep shooting. We got to get our day in. And he's like, no, no, Lucy, you go home. She's like, no, set up the lights. We got to finish the day. <laughs> and she did. And wow. she finished the scene and we got in everything they needed. And, you know, so that's what it was like working with her. It was a real pro. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I couldn't believe that I was, it was me, the other person in the scene, to be <laughs> honest. But it was a dream come true. Nice. Uh, if anybody has questions, you can start lining up over there with Kyle. Line up for questions. If you have any questions over here, line up over there, and I'll be with you. I have a couple, just a couple questions for you, Josie. Uh, you started at, at 12 uh, doing TV commercials. How did that all come about? Uh, yeah, so that kind of what I was saying was from Japan, led me oh, to L.A., and then in L.A. is where I was went out on commercials, oh, okay. right? And so then I just started that way. Wait, when you no, were no, 12? sorry, I, well, not when I was. Tw I didn't. I don't think I did any commercials when I was 12, though. Oh, okay. No. Model. Model, yeah. that's yeah, right. Yeah, the commercials came when I was, yeah. You so there's something I want to ask you. If you're, you're really, oh, no, no, go ahead. You started modeling when you were 12? I did, yeah. Wow. Where, where did you grow up? Seattle. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. And they yeah. had modeling up. Yeah, you know, like catalogs okay. and, you know, yeah, yeah. brochures. Did you go to Japan or? at 12? I went kid? to Japan at 16. Oh 16? Yeah. Did, like, a parent come with you? No. Excuse me, we're just going to talk. No, this is <laughs> cool. <laughs> things I didn't you know guys about are her. good at this. Did your parents yeah. Like, why didn't we have this conversation no. 30 years ago? Awesome. All those years yeah. we worked together. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, no, oh. my parents didn't go. Um, I, you know, it's kind of the same with acting. Like, I was so sort of naive to, like, if I had known how difficult it is to be an actor... I just didn't know. I was like, well, I'll just try this. Why not? Or I'll just, right. even with books, like if I'd gone to Barnes and Noble and went, there's a million children's books, why would you think yours would sell? Or why would, I probably wouldn't. So I go into things with that, like, well, why can't I? Yeah. Which is kind of naivete. How, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but like that, that whole modeling in Japan thing, that, that's a dangerous world. <laughs> it wasn't though. Like it didn't feel that way. I stayed like the, I went twice, 16 and then 17. The first time I stayed at the agent's house, she had all the, they had the, it was a couple, and all the models stayed there. But I mean, I had to learn to use the subway system and do all of that to go to my auditions. And but I mean, it's like, from what I understand, it, it, they can bring, they can suck you into like a not so legit part of the, part of the business, quote unquote. That's kind of also what I mean. Like, I feel like throughout my career, especially from 12 to probably before I met Rob, so 20 or 18, whatever, 19 about four years, I think I had like an angel on my shoulder, really like sweeping me away from situations that were not mm. good. In hindsight, I can remember going, oh my God, like I didn't know what was happening, right? right? But, it, but I would just, this doesn't feel right. I just leave good that situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I have one more final question. You're really active with helping parents with their kids, with their PBS series and uh, parenting books. Can you tell us how you got involved in those projects? Yes, so the PBS, that was, um, uh, I wasn't on that for too long, but yeah, I'm a proponent of children. I love children. I feel like my gift is to understand them. I just can look at them and kind of, I can relate to how they feel. And my children's book came from love of children and having my own. And Melrose Place ended when I was uh, six months pregnant, I think, with my first oh. child. Yeah, because I had apparently, I guess, Michael's baby. Someone was asking me that. On an interview, and I was like, "It's Michael's baby? Like what? <laughs> was it? Does anybody know? It was. <laughs> Thank you. So there's that. Um, anyway, wait. What was your question? <laughs> it was just, how, did you, how, how did you get involved in those projects? Yeah, and so with, okay, so with Tickle Monster. Uh, okay, so after Melrose ended, then I was had a baby, which was perfect. But I was also, I need to be creative. It doesn't need to be acting. I need painting, writing, um, books, whatever it may be. I just need something. And um, that's when I did my first two books, which are compilations of different parenting advice around the world, mm -hmm. little bits of wisdom and making memories. And then my tickle monster came from basically just reading to my son, realizing like, God, I'm reading to him, but I don't even know what I just read to him because I was thinking about all of the things I had to do after I put him to bed. I was just reading to him because that was the right thing for me to do as a parent. And um, I noticed like every time after I'd done, I'd like, you know, tickle his back or do letters on his back. Like he loved that kind of stuff. And then that's sort of how the Tickle Monster came about was a story through. How can I tell a story that, um, you know, makes me present as the reader, but also the child pre is present and wants it more and more because they're getting attention. They're getting a bonding experience. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that was the idea with Tickle Monster. And the kids just, yeah, they just love it because they get real attention from the parent or whomever. And the, the thing is, the kid ends up running around, you've got your gloves and you're tickling them. And it's kind of, it can be kind of tiring to mm -hmm. <laughs> as the reader. But, um, you know, it's timeless. Like, kids want to be tickled. Mm -hmm. For the a long the time. books are available yeah. on, online. They're still they're still in print. And Josie has some yeah. here. And they're they're available. Guys, awesome. Yeah, here. I don't know if you guys saw, but they're the mitts she's talking about are like these furry, tickly monster, they're monster types. They're monster mitts. Yeah, so the parent can do that. Yeah. Just I re I saw them for the first time. Yeah. I was so like, we're going to get to some so audience cool. questions. Do you guys need any water? I'm good. I'm okay. You're all right. Thank you. All right. You have a question. Line up over here. If you have a question, line up over here. And this could go fast. All right. We'll start with this gentleman here. <laughs> no questions. Hi, uh, this is kind of a repeat question that I asked you at your booth, but what was your favorite episode of Melrose Place, and do you still keep in contact with the cast, I give up. and um, what was it like having Anson Williams Potsy as a director on some of the episodes? Anson Williams, yeah, I don't remember. Who, who, who I remember him being nice, I don't remember him specifically as a... And, and I, being surprised I, yeah. that he knew what he was doing, actually. I was like, wait. He's great, yeah. You're I Potsy, how would you know what, you know? He was like... I'm a director for a long time. Yeah. Didn't one of the Hardy Boys direct us, too? Oh, yeah. Well, pa didn't, uh... Yeah. Did one of the Hardy Boys direct us, too? I think too? so. That's terrible that I'm calling him that. <laughs> I don't know. Was yeah, he, he was think on the show. I think yeah, he directed, Steve too. Parker, yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right, yes. Right, right, yes. Right. He did direct us. Yeah, he directed yeah. us. He was a nice guy. I will uh, say one of my favorite episodes uh, or storylines for me was... Um, the Richard, bearing Richard storyline. You remember that last, oh, yeah. where the hand comes out? It was like the bearing season him. finale. Yeah, we buried him yes. alive. We didn't know. We thought he was dead because we hit him in the head. This is uh, Sydney and Jane. So that was enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> Very Melrose, the Very hand Melrose. coming out of yeah. the grave. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next question. Oh, yes. Um, this is kind of a stupid, embarrassing question, so I apologize in advance, but I'm kind of dying to know. Uh, Melrose Place was, you know, a show with young, a lot of young people, so I'm sure you had a lot of fans. At any time during the show's run, or even years after, did any of you ever get a really stupid question or like a really nasty, embarrassing comment? Like, has anyone ever said to you, like, hey, nice boobs, or can I touch your ass? Or has anyone ever said, has anyone, like, yeah. Grant, all the time? So I was, yeah, stay away from my butt. Um, I was at a nightclub. So I don't remember where I was or even why. I wasn't in L.A. And it was at a booth, and there's a person, someone behind me, there's a woman behind me was, like, getting, trying to get my attention, and she was saying how much she loved the show and, you know, just really kind of fawning. And her boyfriend or the man she was with was getting jealous. And I had experienced that before, and generally what, I, what works is for me to just kind of break away from the, the woman and, and pay attention to the guy and introduce myself and ask him what his name is and, you know, give him some attention and let him know that I'm not, you know, a threat. So I took, went around, introduced myself, put my hand out, took, he started to shake his hand. He took my hand and he bit it. He bit Are it. you kidding me? He didn't break the skin, but he bit my hand. <laughs> So, so there, there. <laughs> I can't <Wow>. beat that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, did he just bite my hand? <laughs> just bit my hand. Jeez. I've never had anything yeah. like that. I've <laughs> never. No, I just remember, you know, because they'd come up and comment like, you know, um, you know, you too, you too good for Jake, or you shouldn't go back to him, or, you know, like, as if what? I have any say, <laughs> as if I have any say in the character, they would comment on the characters, you know what I mean? Like, you're, like, maybe with Richard and you, I don't know. Oh, but Michael would, and Jane. But I'm like, okay, oh, mental yeah. note, I'll remember yeah. that. <laughs> I was like, I'm Grant's going still back. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You want to grab another question? All righty. Oh. Hi, guys. Hey. Hello. Yeah, I just realized you were saying you were in your 20s when you were acting, and I was in my 20s when I was watching you, and somehow I thought you guys were older and wiser, because that's what we always think <laughs> when we see people on television. 
But um, no. I actually saw Deborah Foreman speak after a screening of Valley Girl a couple of years ago. And she had talked about how there's you know unique challenges faced by young women in Hollywood. And I was just kind of wondering, Daphne, how old were you when you did that that space comedy? And like, how do you manage when you're like so young in this world of older people? <laughs> oh, that's um, well. I my first uh, I was 19 on my first movie, my first year out, and um, that was the sure thing. And so uh, John Cusack was younger than I was. He had a tutor on set. And then there was Tim Robbins. I was about the same age as the other. And also Rob Reiner, who directed it, was such a kid himself. And then I did, when I did Mel Brooks, uh, Spaceballs, Mel Brooks was such a kid. So he was all that much older. But, I, I mean, it was they were all childlike. So with John Candy and Rick Moranis and, you know, Mel Brooks kept saying, this is for the kids, stop being so serious, you know, or if there was too much swearing or whatever, he's like, the kids are going to love it. It's the kids. Don't forget. That's why we're doing this. So I was very lucky to have these very um, childlike souls to work with. Um, but don't get me wrong. There are people behind the scenes who are not very childlike. And they're, um, you know, a lot of lessons come with being in Hollywood when you're that young, as modeling, I'm sure. So uh, I think it's always good to have someone there to protect you and, um, you know, inform you and help you if you can. Uh, I think for me, like, I have a really strong family and family values, and they're all in Seattle, but I feel like I never um, strayed away from that. Like, I, even on Melrose, yeah, I, I yeah, we, well, here's the thing. When we did Melrose, we didn't have cell phones. There's no cell phones yet, and there was no social media. And so we really just, we went to work, and then we, you know, a lot of people have asked us before, you know, do you guys, while we were on it, do you guys, like, go out together? Do you, but we were young, we're, like, we were starting families. We were, we were very just professional, got to work. We, there was hardly any drama on set, like, it was between none us. That I remember. None. I don't recall any, yeah. 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 Looks Thank like you. we have another question back there. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming. Big fan of the show. A quick two porter. Was there any storylines that your character, you looking back, that would have been fun to play, or did you, you think you accomplished everything you wanted to? And what was Thomas Calabro and Marcia Cross? Were they they were so good at playing the evil characters? Like, just were they nice in real life? Or it's kind of funny because you know Thomas was not supposed to be an evil character. Yeah. I think he just fitted really well. <laughs> Well, I adore I Thomas. Well, like he's yeah. he is yeah, he is a New Yorker and funny. he's funny and he has softened. Yeah. Um he's softened over oh, the I years. Was, no, I, was it, I know kidding. you I know, but <laughs> like that's right. But he can, like he's got his opinions, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's true. Um but I uh, he's just really talented and so I think much he fun also to work got with. a real yeah. kick out of playing that villain. I, I mean I just so. remember him like I just remember his smile. Like I, he yeah. just loved doing that evil stuff. <laughs> like he yeah. loved it. So, uh, Kyle will have one question. Last call, I will come out to you guys. Who has a question? Raise their hand right over here. Let me ask we'll save you for last, Kyle. Hi, guys. Hey. You know, I've been in the band for years. Um, if they ever, I, I know that you can't talk a lot about it, but if you ever decided to do a reboot, would you, would you do it? I think we're all yeah, open yeah. to it. We're I open think to it's it for sure. It's a great time in all of our lives to to do something like that. Of course, so with the strike now, nothing is going on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens but, when that yeah. gets over. But yeah, I'm, we're open. It'd be fun, I think. I have another question on that far side. Oh, Maybe I'm not bringing, 38 I, episodes a year anymore. I'm wow. <laughs> My energy's yeah. gone down. <laughs> oh, I thought of a weird question for Josie Bissett. Okay. Uh-oh. I noticed you were in Japan probably in the 80s. And yes. during the pandemic, I was watching a soap opera anime, The Rose of Versailles. I was wondering if you'd ever seen that and whether it could have possibly had any influence doing a soap opera yourself later. That's a great question. Um, no, I, I, I don't know. I've never seen that. Um, and I, I know my, both my kids love anime, so they probably know what you're referring to. But, um, but I don't know that movie. And, and yeah, 
Sorry. <laughs> Curious now. Yeah, me too. Okay. Last call for questions. All right. You guys are going to be headed back to your table to sign after this. I think we're going to do photo op. Photo op after this. Mm -hmm. But you guys are here all weekend. Hang out. Enjoy. Yep. We've got one final question, but thanks for doing this. And good to see you again. Yeah. Hey, thank you, guys. Kyle, it's all yours. All right. So we all know that whatever can go wrong often does go wrong. Are there any stories on any of the productions you're on where you were on that something went wrong that just kind of kind of broke everyone out of character and you couldn't get it back that day. You had to kind of like call it quits or just something that really funny that happened that kind of had you cracking up. Like you got, you got one. Well, it's not funny though. It's kind of sad. Oh. <laughs> it can be sad. sad. one from Grant first. Yeah, well, mine is just, it's not very funny to everybody else, but it's funny to me. And But by Sydney, Laura Layton and I would just, for whatever reason, get in these horrible laughing fits and we couldn't stop. And it was always like this particular one, the line was, um, there's ammonia under the sink. That was my line to Laura. She needed ammonia for something. And I said, there's pneumonia. And she stayed right in character. She goes, wait, Grandma has pneumonia? And for whatever <laughs> we, we couldn't stop laughing. And we, we just were, we had to, someone else had to come in and be me and be her so that we could finish the scene. And you know you're dying because the crew's like, like, they want to go home. And she said, God... Uh, so yeah, there, there's that. Yeah. That's mine. Yeah. It's true. Once you start the giggle fit and you're yeah, not supposed to, and yeah. everyone around you is getting really serious, you laugh more. It's and more awful. And, more. and you know, the lines coming up that makes you laugh yep. and you know, you're going to bust and it's just like, yeah. you might as well just cut and be done. <laughs> I had that a uh, giggle fit on it. Well, okay. So when I was doing the sure thing, um, Tim Robbins and John Cusack had a giggle episode and could not stop it. And I, I don't know if any, whoever saw this, I play Allison, who is such an uptight, preppy girl. I literally in real life was like, will you please stop it? You know, stop fooling around. And like, that was really me. So maybe I was a biatch to you. I don't know. <laughs> There and I, they was, wouldn't stop, and they kept going, and like oh, I'm like, stop it! <laughs> like, you know, and but it's so funny when you can't stop laughing, you cannot you stop, can't, no matter what. The minute they say action, you're like, <laughs> so, true. so are we gonna get the sad story, yeah, Grant? So I was doing a play in New York um, with Judith Light. In the play, she's in a Gertie, and at this particular moment, my back is to the audience, and we're having an interaction. And all of a sudden, I felt the audience leave us. It's just, you know, you can kind of sense the audience when you're on stage. And I felt them leave us. And then I noticed that Judith was, had an odd look on her face. I turned around and looked. Someone had died in the audience. Oh, no. Wow. Terrible. Yeah. So we um, waited till they took them away. I walked off stage, and... Started the scene over again, and we oh finished gosh. the play. <laughs> Life goes on. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I guess that's one of the downsides of a live audience. There you go. Or yeah. someone well, it, wasn't, it wasn't a live audience, was no. it? We'll put the rest of it. Well, <laughs> everyone else was alive, this one person. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming out and doing this. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> Norris, please head into the uh, photo of Grant Show. Stephanie Ziga and Josie Bazette. Give it up. Come on. That was a lot of fun. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.